behind are the three glittering zebras. So, we, I mean, this is like part of the resources that we have created for, for communicating. Because, I mean, this is that story that you can read there. I mean, in the book, in the book you can read the story. You know, and it. I mean, they can also use uh, WKBT. So, we've got a number of different stories that have, have been created, that have been, uh, you know, like transferred from the text in, and they're produced in the animated form, like in, in WKBT. So, it's nice about, I mean, like, because the, Teachers can begin to talk about the constellation Orion, right? As seen by the Western world, right? And it's, uh, again, Orion as seen by the coin sand people. Because you can see Pleiades there is part of the story, like the seven wives can see the, 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 the Orion's belt, right? Is seen as those three giraffes. You know, Orion's sword is in this story, is the arrow, right? And Belgius. Uh, which is part of, of Orion, you know, the effort of, of Orion in terms of the Westerners. But in this story, it's seen as the, as the lion. So you can bring those perspectives and you can, I mean, also look at how we see Orion here and how it's seen from, from Europe. So you can bring a number of, of things. And then this is what we also communicate uh, with, with the teachers. So you saw about the new about the film, and this is like the reality, but the stories that you can read from the left for, 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 for the teachers. But also we have used, um, like I said, uh, Stellarium. Just uh, We have used Stellarium. So we have also used Stellarium, you know, like to create artworks uh, that are based on the South African stories, like this story, I'll show you the story. You know, like Orion is seen by the in, by Western, Western perspective, but the British here, and it's seen here. And we've created like all the different artworks based on the, you know, like, <coughs> you just can change the location here, we have to change the location. I, I don't know how people are familiar with Stellarium. Yeah. I've used Stellarium, okay, so I won't even change the. I want to put the, I mean, like, you can put the, the date and the time and the location. Right. So, in terms of, of, um, of okay, let's just move the, the, the labels. Let's move the labels. So, it appears like it will appear in the night sky. So, you can see there's Orion there, but it's as, as seen. Um, can join it nicely, constellation lines. Right? There's the constellation lines, and you can put the archways. Right? You can see there's Orion there. Okay? There's Orion. Okay? But I mean, what we have done is to insert the style of for the different peoples now. So if you look there, you will see that there's the western, which is there. But we have put also the, the Isikosa one, Isizulu one, and we also put the Khoisen one, right? Which I'll, this is what I'll show you, right? And then we have it, but as seen from the northern hemisphere, right? You see the. Okay, this is how I should have was turned upside right, upside down. You can see there's blue juice there, there's orange pearl, there's orange salt. There's Aldebaran, but okay, this is like kind of upside down. There's Pleiades, the seven wives. So what we've done is to put the different stories. Okay, this is work in progress. We've put some of the stories in Tosa. Like if you look at Sikosa or Sisul, I mean, the, this Orion is seen differently. And Sikosa is seen differently. Because the Tosa people, they see those as, as graves, you see? as the, the Tosa version of the story, which is different from the core itself. And you can start telling the different stories and comparing how people related to 
the constellations. And this story is nice because it makes you understand the sky. Because if you know the story, the story of um, the Khoisan story, and you know, you okay, you see the lion, you know, you have to be have, have the lion, you have to have the two giraffes, you have to have the, so you can relate to it. They help you understand, find the way in the night sky. So this is one way that we have done to, 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 to create all the different artworks for, okay. like for instance here, you see Sirius, this Sirius, this tall site called a Macau, you know, Macau, which is like a champion, like a champion, the brightest star in the night sky. And you have, um, uh, okay, that's a silly man, a silly man. Okay, you can put the, the names there. You can put the names there, the names. Like a silly man, like this. I'm a cause, that the line, Orion's belt, they are in the line. And you can see this one, in power, or in power, power, or champion, the champion, which is Orion. So this is also work in progress, and as we are finding the different stories and how people are relating. We are including them, and our intention is to include all the the, the, the southern um, southern people's understanding of the stars. And we have been helped a lot by his not here now. Ah, okay, we have been helped a lot by Aki. He's, he's outside. Yeah, we have been helped by Aki. Okay, Jared, I've contributed to creating these stories. I think at this point, I'll just give it to my colleague. I mean, if there are no questions on the different things, uh, questions. Uh, can I just ask, uh, you said the uh, updated uh, Lewis Clavellian, uh, when was those cultures updated, those story cultures? Ah, uh, last year, last year. Because, this, this, because this, we only see, I, I mean, I use the Clavellian, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm it does not, not sure have I saw. The Star Law, did you check the Star Law? I must check Star Because you have to go to the Star Law and then you will find the list. Okay. Yeah. But, oh, so it's But I mean, the that we want to give you in the Astro you will find it up here. Okay. 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 Any questions? Have you put the Worldwide Telescope tours online? Can you put it? Are they just in development only, or have you actually released those online? Oh, no, not yet. We, but they are on our site, but we are going to put them in the communities there. You know, there's different communities. Right, right. Yeah, we we'll put it as part of the tour. Someone is working on that. But we wanted to put it as a package. No, we're doing the same thing. Is that same stuff with uh, Australia? Yeah. Are there any other questions, colleagues? Okay, thank you. So, um, quickly, before Clive joins us, he's going to be talking about archaeoastronomy. Um, um, we were going to do a little basic astronomy, and so to get a feel for the room, how many of you study astronomy? Have studied astronomy? Are all ringers? Great. So lots and lots of experts of astronomy. And so um, for those of you who aren't, I just want to give you a little more contemporary view of how we inspire students. Um, but since there are in half the room, our astronomers chime in at any point. Because this is the beautiful thing about astronomy, which we love, is that it's something that we all share and we can all be a part of and that's the beautiful thing so it's not for me to tell you i brought lots of beautiful pictures and that's how we inspire our students um, and so we like to talk about we say the naked eye what can we do with just our eyes because astronomy is this beautiful thing that we can all share with our valuable instruments although that helps us and so we can see the sun and the moon and the planets and stars and constellations but even with our eyes in dark skies we can see star birth regions called nebulae um, we can see clusters, we can see the city in which we live, the Milky Way galaxy, other galaxies, very lucky from the southern hemisphere, you have the Magellanic clouds, and comets, these wonderful travelers um, in the sky. And so this is actually not with someone's eye, this is taken with cameras, but you can get uh, in some time lapse just some pictures of the types of things we could see if we go out and view. And so again, there's Orion on the left. From where I live, that's what it looks like, um, and different parts of the Milky Way. And then we can start to use some basic tools like binoculars, and they help us see more in the sky. And so, here are what the moon might look like. Um, that's the Andromeda Galaxy, um, different star clusters. So, we have binoculars, and it helps us start to see more. But then really, the innovation that has made astronomy uh, such a magical thing for all of us are telescopes. 
Um, and so they're all about collecting light. Kind of a, a weird concept when you think about it, but they're made up of, like Tevi said, of, of attuned lenses or mirrors. Mount them. And anything from a small tripod to these things in the ground that help us. Um, they have to be focused, um, and they're often assisted by computers now. That really helps us. Um, and if we think about the most basic, we have refracting telescopes, the ones with the lenses, and then the reflecting telescopes, the ones where major observatories are. But they're all about doing something with light. That's what we're collecting. And then if you're in the home market, these are the types of telescopes you can uh, purchase anywhere uh, around $800 US. They have computers on them. They'll do everything. They connect to GPS. Um, but this is what optics start to look like through telescopes, and you'll start to see that they, um, you start to see a lot more detail on them, right? You start to see um, craters on the moon, and you start to see this is actually Mars down here on the right. Uh, this is what I study, and you can see there's a polar ice cap on Mars. And you start to see these things come into focus. Um, you start to see more details on galaxies and these star-forming regions. And of course, Jupiter, Saturn in the lower left, globular star clusters, all sorts of things that when you look up in the sky, you start to get even more amazing detail. But then, of course, the innovation for all of us, some people who are professional astronomers, was CCD. This is how we're starting to collect all the light, and we can collect a lot of it. And so these charge coupling devices are actually the same things that show up in your digital camera. So you carry these around, but this is really the innovation that has made astronomy able to make beautiful pictures. Um, I won't go through the horrible details, but in a lot of ways, they're collecting chart, and it's kind of like little buckets, and they travel down um, in wells that help us collect all of that light that's turned into images. So we're really collecting data that gets turned into images uh, that we combine, and now we really can do some beautiful pictures by taking lots of different filtered pictures and giving us color. But of course, the greatest innovation are space-based telescopes. Uh, and I'll show you why in a little bit, but they are able to help us see the heavens in a way, of course, that we never could before. Um, and then the one that really led the way was Hubble, which went up in 1990, still getting beautiful pictures, and now we have many new space telescopes. Um, international collaborations helping us see the stars. And then we get pictures like this. And so this is actually a picture of a galaxy that we saw here. And you can see from space how much more you can see, so much more detail. Um, and this is just a city of stars. And we're talking about billions of stars, and stars dying and being formed. And it really has the imagination. You can see all of that detail that we couldn't see if we were just sitting on the Earth. And so when we start to think about these innovations, um, this actually came from a course that we have at the University of Arizona that's a free course. It's one of these massively open online courses called a MOOC. Um, and it's from a course done <coughs> by Chris and B, who's one of our astronomers who I work with, and it's called Astronomy State of the Art. And so if you wanted to take a free online course with Chris, you could look up Astronomy State of the Art, and you too can go through, and he has many, many, many slides, and you can at your own leisure, kind of go through uh, his course. And it kind of talks about how um, 1600s Galileo could make out the moon and the stars, and all the way through, we have these amazing telescopes here on the Earth, all the way up to the Hubble Space Telescope, which has helped us understand, um, in a physical sense, the history of the universe as far as we understand the star formation of the universe. And so some of the issues of why uh, space is so important, when we think about um, huge problems to observing the heavens uh, from Earth, number one is really light pollution, which is a, a very large problem in urban areas. And not only is it a problem for professionals, I think it is the greatest uh, threat to children and to the public seeing this guy. I used to teach in Chicago in the United States, and people would come to me and go, when do these stars come out? because they had never seen a star, because we have so much light in our cities that when they look up, they don't see that. And so they totally, all of our urban children have lost their connection to the sky. And so um, it's really a real problem. And so um, where I live in Arizona, we have the International Dark Sky Association, and their whole thing is dedicated to trying to get light down so that we can have 
have uh, some view of the sky and, and reconnect it. But I would say that 90% um, of the children that I work with have never seen the Milky Way galaxy. And so this is a picture, or actually lots of pictures, of the light pollution from space. So you can see, you can really make out all of the urban areas in the world. And uh, it's quite extraordinary to, to think about. Uh, that's just light going up in the air. Um, there's new research to show that there are a lot of biological implications to that light as well. So it's bad for astronomy, it's bad for animals, it's bad for people. Of course, we also have air. The thing that keeps us alive also gives us a lot of turbulence. And so we do have some innovations on Earth that really help us, like adaptive optics, but they do make it pretty hard um, to take good, clear pictures. And then the other thing that air does is it's blocking a lot of the type of light that gives us insights into these objects. And so we can see lots of things in visible light, but if we want to see things in x-rays, and some of our infrared across the spectrum is getting absorbed because we do want to get outside that atmosphere to be able to learn more and more about the universe. And so we do have lots of spacecraft, again, internationally that look across the spectrum to help us understand so many objects. And of course, we could spend months talking about all the wonderful things. So I just brought some beautiful pictures um, to talk about. So this is uh, the plan. I studied three views of Mars, and uh, this was a Hubble picture. And again, you can see that there are actually ice caps, and so this very foreign world um, is much more like Earth than we ever imagined. And every day we gather more data. We have data like this from telescopes. We've also landed rovers and landers on the surface, and so uh, recently I worked on a mission and we tasted ice, water ice, on Mars. It's quite incredible, near the North Pole. And uh, we are learning more and more about the history of water and how much this planet, which is nearby, was very, very much like Earth, although it's not today. Um, this one is wonderful, Jupiter, because we can see it with our eye, we can see it with a telescope, and uh, it is the king planet uh, right now in our solar system, the largest planet. And it's very dynamic, and so it has a surface that's constantly changing. It also has moons, four very large moons, that when we look through a small telescope, we can see them going around. And again, imagine um, this world that's not too far away. And then every child's favorite, which is Saturn, because of their magical rings. These beautiful rings, uh, big chunks of ice and dirt flying around, but you can see how very different this planet is. And again, a wonderful object to see through a very small telescope. But then when we have our bigger telescopes, we can start to make out um, the most unimaginable places, these magical places. And so this is a star forming region. And to give you an idea about how small we would be in here, we would be just a tiny speck in these huge gases of hydrogen. And these are stars being born. In. And so it just kind of gives you a little bit perspective for some of us about how truly small they are. That our whole solar system would be a tiny speck in a large clouds of gas and dust. And there are so many of these pictures where we say that most of the universe right, is very dark, but we have these beautiful places of molecular hydrogen that are creating new worlds. Okay. Um, new worlds, new planets, new suns, everything. Who's that name? And then other things where, you know, this would be something like a sun-like star, a star like ours, and a couple billion years, a couple billion years up, we're not in skies, right? So it's not going to go into an explosion, but it's going to have a very beautiful end. We call this a planetary nebula. Um, it's very round, just like a planet, it's perhaps to be confused. Um, but being lit up. Again, things that we can see with telescopes, and these are all really great things that we have um, students studying and help us really understand um, the history of our planet, our sun, and our galaxy. And then when stars do explode in these huge 
huge explosion, it's called supernova, and spew their guts all over space. And this, of course, is where we get very heavy elements on the periodic table. And so we all know that what's inside of us came from inside of a star. When we look at the study of what happened in the early universe, we know that stars and fusion can only create a certain amount of elements and that it does take a star exploding to create some more heavy elements. And so one of the things that I've heard as I've traveled is that people always say that we're made of stars. And so um, indigenous people have told us this, but we also know from science that we're made of stars. It's one of the wonderful connections that we have. The things inside your body came from inside of the star. And so there are just so many examples of beautiful pictures of things in the sky. Like our galaxies. And we can have galaxies interacting. And they come in all different sizes and shapes. But again, all made of basically the same things. And then, of course, the great innovation that we're with now uh, with these telescopes. So not only do they let us see, they let us see for a long time. And so this actually was one of the most extraordinary pictures ever taken. Uh, a long time ago now, it was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope for 10 days. And no one at that time was brave enough to ask for 10 days on a telescope until you're the director. And you get to ask for 10 days of time on a very coveted telescope. And at that time, was able to look in the sky where there was nothing, very dark part of the sky. And um, this is what they found. And these are all galaxies. So you can see a couple stars, but all of these are galaxies. And so in a place of space where we thought there was nothing, we started to say, the longer we collect that light, that history, the more we can find out about the universe. And this totally revolutionized astronomy at that time. And so now we know that we want to collect a lot of light. We want to use our telescopes in space and large telescopes. But that space isn't nearly as empty as we once thought. That really, the universe is full of galaxies and planets and stars and wonderful places. And then it gets even more wonderful. We found um, that there are things in the universe that even we can't see. And so where a lot of research now is in something called dark matter, um, that we can start to see that it has an effect on matter. But we can't even see or detect what it is. And so there are lots of people who model what this is. But we can see things like called gravitational lensing. So you can see over on the left, start to see that light is being bent around something. And then the last thing I'll talk about for a second is that the other innovation, most of the pictures that are coming back from these telescopes are in beautiful colors. But one of the greatest innovations has been able to be able to see things in invisible light. I mean, part of the electromagnetic spectrum that our eyes can't detect, which is where computers have really helped us. And so we can start to, this is a picture of the galaxy in different types of light, but it really helps us see things that we couldn't see if we just had a regular telescope. With a visible light, we're able to see the structure of the galaxy. We're able to see all sorts of things. And again, we're just collecting this light. Astronomy is a very interesting subject, and we have to wait for all of that history to come to us. And we wait, so we don't know what's happening, but we can see things in lots of different Study. Um, 
that are out there. And again, many of these things they can see with their eye, they just have to know what they're looking for, and then we can show them a picture of what it looks like. And as I said, each one of these things we can spend tons of time talking about. I just wanted to show you a little bit of what's out there. Because our next speaker, Sharon. <laughs> He's just there. Um, so I know we just did a crash course. Um, any questions or things you'd like to see or talk about? Well, then you're just in time. I need a bit of faffing around time sorting computers out anyway. Well, so.